Hey guys, welcome back. Tom here from RC Plane Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I cut a hinge slot for a pinned style hinge using this fancy guy right here, the Great Plains uh, slot machine hinge slotting tool. Now, I will say uh, right from the get-go that these are not available anymore from Great Plains. Uh, but they are, however, pretty uh, widely available on eBay and uh, secondhand through um, uh, RC websites and RC forums, things like that, that have a classified section. That's actually where this one came from. And I believe uh, Ron bought his that way as well. I might be wrong. He may have found his at the hobby shop. But at any rate, uh, unfortunately, they don't make these, but they are still fairly readily available. Um, and these are really kind of fun to use. Um, but uh, we, th we thought it would be worth making a video because they are, they are at least still... Uh, pretty widely available and you can still get your hands on them pretty easily, usually around 40 bucks or less, uh, depending on where you find it. Um, but basically, it's just a powered, in this case, this one has a cord. Um, there you go, you can see this one is the AC version. Uh, they made a battery powered one too, so those are out there. If you find one of those um, and, and that's your uh, your choice, then uh, grab one of those. They're, they're definitely worth the investment, especially if you do a lot of building. Um, and it's just a cool tool to have in your in your toolbox when the time comes to use one. And again, I'm gonna show you how to use it using this. This is a Dubro flat style pinned hinge. You can kind of see there. You see they pretty pretty floppy. Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie. Pretty floppy, you know, pretty uh, uh, freely moving hinge. These are great hinges. I like them. They're um, they're very, very thin. Uh, so uh, almost as thin as a CA hinge, which uh, is pretty easy to, to cut a slot if you wanted to with an X-Acto knife. But what fun is that when you have a power tool like this? So pretty, pretty simple to use. I mean, I've already got uh, my, <laughs> my dualist uh, uh, trailing edge. I've got two slots left here uh, to use. So we'll pick this one, I think. Um, same, same. I have a center line drawn, you know, on the, on the trailing edge here, just like, just like before. You can see all these other hinge slots I've used. Um, but there's a center line right down the trailing edge here. And then this will be my control surface. Again, drawn a nice center line down the leading edge of that beveled surface. Um, this tool, I mean, there's really, really not a lot to explain. You just basically, this is the alignment tool that comes with it. Uh, you can get CA blades and then you can get thicker blades designed to be used with um, uh, like those thick Great Plains hinges or uh, thicker flat style uh, nylon hinges. Um, we've got the thin blades on here today, which is plenty thick enough for this, uh, this Dubro pinned hinge that I'm gonna use here. Probably could have put the thick blades on, but uh, trying to keep it simple. Um, but as you'll notice here, I'll go ahead and loosen this up. Um, this is a, uh, it's adjustable. You can see it kind of moves here. And you'll notice that <clears throat> there are V grooves right here and here, whoop, right there, on either side of these, on either end rather, of these slots. And what those grooves are for, are for you to look and set the, uh, the center line of your, of your hinge line right in those grooves so that way you know you're centered. And then when you plunge the tool in these slots, you'll know then that you're exactly on your center line. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, here we go. I'll go ahead and get started. So what I'm doing here is I'm aligning this thin, I'm using the thin blades, so I'm using this thin slot, right? And what I'm doing is I'm lining that center line up in those V notches. Hopefully you can see that right there, maybe. If that, uh, if that doesn't turn out, I apologize, but uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm aligning the V notches up in the slot that I plan on using, in this case, the thin one, with my uh, line that I drew on my, on my trailing edge. So you get that in alignment, get that t uh, tool in just the right place, and then you lock it down with these two little thumb screws. It's kind of a delicate operation, uh, especially when you're trying to, trying to do it while recording it here, but I'm doing my best. There we go, I've got it where I think I want it. I'm gonna lock that one down, and I'm gonna lock this one down, and then I'm gonna look at it. Yep, right where I want it. So you can kinda see here that when I lay that tool on the trailing edge, this surface is laying right on my flat surface, and then you can see that notch is lined up with my 
line that I drew down my trailing edge. And then once, once I've got that tool set the way I want, I'll go ahead and like before, you know, like I've done on all the other ones, I mark a, a point right there where I want the center of my hinge to be. So let me do that real quick. I must have missed that step. I marked it on the top, but I didn't mark it on the end here. So we'll mark that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tool and I'm, I'm looking through that slot and they give you little indentations on the top of this tool also. Probably not going to be able to see them, but that's where you uh, will line up the center. Uh, you'll line that up with the point that you just drew on the, on the trailing edge where you want the center of the hinge to be. And that gives you a nice reference here. And then once you've got everything all aligned, just like that, pretty much right where I want it. You take this handy dandy tool and it's uh, electric powered. So pretty cool when you can use an electric tool to do you know, a job that normally takes you maybe five, 10 minutes to do. This thing will do nearly instantly. So basically you just line the teeth up in the slot just like so. Give it a squeeze and go. And that's it. That's literally all there is to it. I pull this tool away and look at there, I've got a hinge slot. And, sorry about that. Because I'm using a pin style hinge, it has that thick pin portion. Just like before, I'm gonna take my uh, X-Acto, cut, uh, cut a little bevel here to make room for that pin. You can see the material I'm cutting away there. And the nice thing about this, this hinge slot, or the uh, slot machine, is it removes the material for you. So like I don't have to go in there with my blade and hook out all the material that is jammed in the slot. It does it all for me. So then all that's left to do is to give my, give my hinge a trial fit. Look at that. Easy peasy. I love this tool. I don't know if you can pick it up in the video. Yeah, there you go. Nice. My hinge still moves nice and freely. I've made room for that pin. You can see the hinge is almost exactly halfway right up to the pin. So I'm gonna minimize my hinge gap. And then just like every other hinging video I've done, is I'm gonna take my control surface, my, my elevator in this case, make myself a mark on either side, just like so, and then Shouldn't have to readjust this, but, but if my trailing edges are different thicknesses, might have to adjust it. And also, I'm going to be going at an angle, right? Because this is a trailing, a tapered trailing edge. It has, you know, a, a wider profile on the front than at the back. So what I have to do is I have to adjust because I want to get these hinges in there at that 90 degree angle, just like every other hinge. Is what I'm doing now is I'm looking down the side and I'm getting this piece perpendicular to my hinge line. And you'll notice that it lets me do that. It'll let me go past, right? So there I'm a little overcompensating and here it's not quite, right? So I can go to where I'm exactly perpendicular. I'm a little past. That looks pretty close to me. Yep. And then once I've got the, once I've got the angle, I'll go ahead and set the depth by putting those notches right on my center line, just like that right here. Thin blade, I'm using the thin, the, the notches that line up with that right there by my finger. Those look like they're pretty close to being aligned. Then I'm going to lock it down. Whoopsie. Just like that. And then all, I, all that's left to do, center that up uh, between my two marks. Give it a good clamp with my fingers and then use the tool again. And this is so much fun to use. And imagine how much time you can save if you're doing like a lot of hinges. Um, man. And here's another cool feature. These, although they're sharp, just like the arrow brooches, they're not going to cut you like an X-Acto knife. Right, so it's a fairly safe tool to use, actually. Even though it's a power tool, it's uh, it's pretty easy to use and also fairly safe. Um, again, just like before, going to take, put a little bevel here, make room for that uh, the pin on that hinge, shave off a little bit of material there, flip it over, 
do the other side just like that and then give it a test fit. Oop, get in there. Might help if I put it in the right direction. There we go. Just like that. Presto change over. Quick hinge done the easy way. I'm gonna make that one a little bit deeper, um, which is easy enough to do. Won't need that because the slot is already there. Um, just put it in there, give it a squeeze, and just finish it off. Now I should have plenty of depth. Just like that. There we go. I like it. Same process as before. Um, I get them all done on my uh, control surface, the horizontal uh, stabilizer in this case. Uh, do all my hinge pockets uh, and then uh, go back and do the hinges after I've uh, marked all their positions on my control surface. Just like before with a pinned hinge, uh, alignment is critical. Uh, you want to make sure all those pins line up and they're in line with your hinge line. You don't want any binding. Um, the, uh, these are capable of making a slot a little bit wider than you want. All you need to do is if, uh, if the slot's not wide enough, you just simply move the tool over a little bit, do one side, move it over another on the other side, and grab that side. Or you can also widen them with your X-Acto knife. Um, having the slots a little bit wider than the hinge is not a bad thing. Uh, that way, again, when you flex that control surface, it'll kind of allow that hinge to center itself in that pocket where it needs to be. Um, but anyway, just like before, we'll use the cool trick I used before. Um, I've got my nice warm uh, Vaseline here. I'm gonna give it a dunk, dip it off here. That was my camera telling me it's out of juice, so that's awesome. And then we'll give it a dunk here on the other side. There we go. And now my hinge, the hinge pin, is completely protected uh, from the epoxy that I'm getting ready to put on there. Same thing as before. Grab something to mix this stuff in, something to mix it with, and then hopefully we won't have to wait too long with these nasty bottles of epoxy that I'm borrowing from Ron. Trying not to complain too much about them because beggars can't be choosers. But uh, just like with, uh, with most epoxies, equal parts A to B, you can weigh it, you can eyeball it. Uh, the, the, um, the stuff that, uh, I think this is actually made by Bob Smith Industries, I think, uh, but a lot of uh, uh, hobby shops will put their names on them. Uh, it's good stuff, it's pretty forgiving. You can be off a little bit on the ratios and uh, usually get away with it. Um, I just put a little dab here. Since I'm only doing one hinge, I'm using five minute epoxy. Uh, I highly recommend using 30 minute epoxy because hopefully you're gluing all your hinges in at once, um, which is, that's how I do it. Uh, try to uh, lessen the pain, if you will. Um, but since I'm just using one hinge, five minute epoxy, it's gonna give me plenty of time to do this one hinge. And just like on the other ones, one side, you know, get some epoxy on that, try to saturate it, get it through those holes, just like that. You can give it a flip, put some here on the other side. There we go. There we go. And then I'll put it in my control surface. Give it a shimmy here, there we go. And then I got a little bit too much on there, so I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that off. And then before I Actually put it into my control surface, same idea. A little bit of epoxy on one side, try to get it down into those holes, flip it over. There we go, just like that. And then I like to put them in at an angle. Uh, that way I'm not trying to shove the hinge in line, potentially uh, putting it farther into one side than the other. Uh, usually don't have that trouble if you just give it a little flex like so and work it in and then I'm watching, and you can see that because I went a little bit wider on my control, uh, on my uh, hinge pocket, I've got a little bit of wiggle room 
hard to pick up on the camera, but I do have some side to side play so that if I was doing the whole control surface, that little bit of wiggle room when I flex the control surface like so, gives those hinges room to align themselves with the hinge line. And then uh, once I've done that, I take some tape, tape everything in place, let it set up for, in this case, 10 minutes or so, and it'll be ready to go. So anyway, that's how I, uh, how I cut a hinge pocket for a Dubro pinned hinge with this awesome tool, the Great Plains Slot Machine Automatic Hinge Cutting Tool. Hope you learned something. Uh, hope it wasn't too boring. Thanks for watching.